So Hawaii Public School starts this week, and even among Hawaii parents, public schools tend to have a not so great reputation. And part of it is because of the low academic scores, but there's also other behavioral and social issues that people have a lot of concerns about. And as someone who went to private school and public school in Hawaii, I thought I'd share some of my experiences, particularly how I overcame my fear of public school kids. Because I don't know if you heard, but you know, sometimes it can be a little, you know. Now, having had gone to private school for six years, I had my opinions on what public school kids were like based on what I observed in my very limited interactions with them. And a lot of those assumptions were actually confirmed when I went to public school for summer fun. It was Pu'ahala Elementary School summer fun, and I knew no one. I remember when I went there, I was just scared. They did things that I just wasn't comfortable with. They had dances, the kids listened to rap music, and the swearing. Gosh, there was so much swearing for these kids. And we were all like young kids, maybe like fourth, fifth grade. And I specifically remember, because of how hard it was for me to make that adjustment, I purposely got sick. You know, like the kid kind sick where you don't want to go to school. And I didn't go to summer fun for probably about 80% of the time. And so whenever the teachers would see me, they'd be like, oh, hey, you're back. So based on that experience, it sort of confirmed my assumptions about public school kids. And yeah, I was afraid. And then there was a year that my mom lost her job and we had to leave private school to go to public school. That was a really hard transition, even thinking about it all these years later. It was really tough to make that change. And when I went to public school, I remember at recess, I didn't know how to interact with public school kids. I would just stand around hoping that a kid would talk to me. So interestingly enough, while I was filming this video, we actually stopped by my old school and it's unfortunately fenced off. It wasn't, never, it wasn't like that back in the day there was no fence here but this is the area where i used to stand like these trees i used to stand like right over there during recess when i didn't know anyone and my classroom was up there so i would either hang out over here and i or i would stand over here by the tree during morning school and also <laughs> during recess and i didn't talk to anybody but eventually that changed when i made friends and then we used to hang out actually behind over here, behind the building. Come on, bud. We used to hang out behind the building over here and we used to play uh, either on the jungle gym or we would play volleyball right out here in this field. Yeah, this is where I used to hang out. A lot of good times here in public school. But then there was just one kid in school. Let's just call him Peter. And for some reason, Peter thought I was cool. And he started talking me up and he started to be my friend for no reason. Just, he wanted to be my friend from there started to make a lot more friends. Started playing volleyball at recess, girls started to take notice, and then I realized that, you know, these public school kids, they're, they're not bad. I mean, heck, I even started dressing like them. Baggy pants, oversized shirts, low Jansport backpacks. That was the style back then. And by the end of the school year, I had gone from this new private school kid loner to one of the most popular kids, and yeah, Public school kids weren't that bad. The public school experience was not that bad. I did well academically and I was able to find some common community with some of the other high achievers in public school. We even had our own math class, like advanced math class. And although I was one of only two Japanese in a sea of Chinese students, I thought, hey, that's pretty good. But I think more importantly, public school taught me that I have a lot more control over my education than I had previously thought. The education was on me and my family. That yes, of course, private school has more resources, but in a public school setting, you can go and ask questions. You can push yourself as far as you'd like if you're curious or if you wanna learn things. And yes, I did push myself to ask more questions. I pushed myself to learn more things and to figure out what it is that I wanted to do eventually going off to college. My parents weren't paying tuition each month anymore, but they were still invested in my education and in my successes. They cared about what it is that I was learning and made sure that I finished my homework and that my grades were pretty high. I mean, a 3.8 GPA, that's pretty good, yeah? And that brings us here. 
McKinley High School. Proud graduate right here. So interestingly enough, I had this dream about going back to school. It was, you can't see it there, but it's that building back there. It's an English classroom. And I was in AP English and we had to take a test. And obviously I didn't prepare for it. When I got the test, it required that I summarize and also pull out a quote from maybe 50 stories that we were supposed to have read, 50 stories or novels. And of course I was panicked. In the dream, I knew that we had a test. I just didn't know what it was about. And it seemed like everyone around me was prepared for it. And when I looked down at my desk, I just had my one test paper, but everyone else seemed to have sheets of notes. And then I realized in the dream that you could have notes, that the teacher allowed you to take notes just for this test. And I thought, oh great, I didn't even know about the test apparently, and now I have no notes. And so before actually starting, I thought to myself, well, there's no way she could actually know all the stories and I could probably just make up the quotes and be okay, might be passable. And just as we're about to start taking the test, students start standing up and leaving the classroom. One by one, they just get up from their seats and they leave. And the teacher is so overwhelmed and confused, she even passes out on the ground. Except I just sat at my desk and I just started to get to work. It didn't matter what the other students were doing, the fact that they were all leaving, I just had to get to work and I had to accept the responsibility that even though I didn't prepare, I was still gonna take the test and I wasn't gonna run away. And that if I failed, well, that was on me. And maybe this dream has some Freudian elements to it, like people leaving Hawaii and me kind of staying behind and trying to make it work. So I don't know, I don't know what that means, but all I've come to know and believe is that the educational environment, like this school here, it's tertiary. That to me above that is the individual and your parents. That sure, there are external factors that, that, that are important. I'm not saying that they're not, but you have a lot more control and you have a lot more input on your outcome when it comes to education. You decide whether you're gonna do the homework in front of you. You're gonna decide whether you even go to school or not. You're gonna decide how motivated you are and what you wanna pursue when no one's around you, when you look around and no one's pushing you to do anything. That's when you've gotta come up with, why am I doing this? So yeah, don't even be afraid of public school kids. Thanks for watching and aloha.